Might help if I muted myself. Uh, yes, yeah, so welcome everyone to the sixth session of Amalthea. I don't really have much in the way of announcements other than uh, if you haven't noticed already, the first episode of Avenger and the first episode of Akagi should be up on my YouTube and on iTunes and pretty much everywhere I post the VODs and the, the podcast versions. Uh, we also have the second session of Avenger tomorrow. Uh, just be aware that because of daylight savings times, uh, some of you in the world might be an hour off than usual, if that makes any sense. We are springing forward, so technically we're meeting an hour ahead of where we meet now. If you're confused, don't worry, everybody else in the world is. Just basically look at whatever time it is in New York City, that's the time that the game starts. So it's it's still going to be at 2.15 for these guys, and 3.15 for Avenger, etc., etc., it's just that we, you know, mess with our GMT. So, you know, just look at New York City, whatever time that is, that's when we play. Um, if in doubt, curse the name of Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, I mean, it, if you need to blame anyone, blame Franklin. And really, that just goes for anything. Like, even if it's not related to Franklin at all, just blame him. It works. Uh, let's see. I think no, he's that's... not going to complain. That was to say. Uh, I think that's all I really have in the way of the... Oh, one quick thing. Uh, today will be somewhat uh, Dragon Squad-centric, but of course we will be cutting back and forth between uh, Dragon Squad and what's going on with the rest of the fleet. Uh, but without any further ado, I believe, uh, McCall, you have the opener, please. Personal log. Stardate 62890.5. Lieutenant Junior Grade Vinleth reporting. With proper planning and resource management, the Transwarp shuttle has been completed a week ahead of schedule. My team, which the crews have taken to calling Dragon Squad, has performed admirably. I am eager to show the soft skins what we're capable of. Our mission has been assigned. We are to set course to the Sol system to inform Starfleet as to the fate of the Gamma Vanguard. I suspect this ship will be used as a courier for some time. Still, there should be plenty of opportunity for some adventures along the way. I look forward to christening. Ah, I would like to christen the ship the USS Radiance after the first spaceship to leave the Serato Draco homeworld centuries ago. I have a meeting with Captain Smurthrin to make my pitch. This should be fun. End of log. Alrighty. So, as promised, uh, Murthrin, you're chilling in your ready room. You're looking at reports, looking over the latest uh, construction logs of the station. And I guess, real quick, did we ever decide a name for the station? Uh, not specifically. We would, I think, the one we were looking at was Alexandria. I mean, I, I'm fine with Alexandria if everybody likes Alexandria. <laughs> Deeper Space One. Deeper Space One. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm you know, it's not super Alexandria. important, but we do need to figure out a name eventually. Um, so, you know, you're looking over, you know, schematics, reports, etc. about the Starbase uh, when there is a Chimature door. Coming. In. in steps Miss Venleth. Captain. And I stand at ramrod attention. Lieutenant Junior Grade Venleth of the Serato Draco team reporting that the uh, as of yet unnamed starship has been created. And I'll pass you the pad. Mm hmm. And we'll sort of give it a look over. Hmm. USS Radiance. Yes, sir. That was the first uh, space shuttle to ever leave the Serato Draco homeworld successfully and land after a successful mission, sir. <clears throat> Sorry, sir. Well, history remembers the bold. And I sort of smirk a little. So that's an approval? <laughs> and sort of smiles back and like signs off on the pad. I wish the Radiance a safe voyage. Thank you, sir. Um, as how much of the physical items are we expected to take back to Saul on our first trip? It appears that word has got around that there might be a way home, and several folks have written letters and some physical trinkets, sir. Not entirely and, sure we uh, can fit it all. Mithrin will sort of think for a minute. Uh, any letters that you feel you can easily store on the ship's computers, feel free to take. We'll uh, we'll save the physical trinkets until we know for certain 
that we've got a direct line of contact back to Terra. Ah, Sol, sorry, R wrong franchise. Yes, sir. Well then, uh, unless there is anything else you need from me? Uh, no, sir. Your crews have been very helpful in getting this ship underway. I look forward to taking my team through it and put it through its paces, sir. Very well. Dismissed. And, uh, Lieutenant? Good luck. Sir? Thank you, sir. I turn and exit, and as soon as I... The doors close behind me, I'll just tap, uh, Vinleth to Zevni. Zevni here. He's approved Radiance. Let's put the name on, put on a fresh coat of paint, and let's get the heck out of here. Yes, sir. We'll begin to paint the name on the outsides. Right. So, I know I have a shuttle bay somewhere. Hmm. Apparently I didn't put in the shuttle bay. That's on me. So, we'll just use the flight deck for now. Uh, so, uh, you know, the Dragon Squad is going to meet... Uh, pretty much just in the massive hangar that the Jupiter class has. And you are, as soon as I find your tokens, there you are. Uh, I know, you know, I kind of did the art for the characters, but I figure this is a good opportunity uh, since these are kind of newish characters. Uh, if you care to introduce your character, tell us a little bit about them. Uh, I believe we've already done Vinleth, but if you have anything to add, uh, McCall, this would be the time. Um, other than the fact that she is the de facto commander, uh, team leader of this group, mm -hmm. uh, she has several hunting trophies around her in the shape of, like, bone necklaces or, uh, bracelets. Okay. Uh, let's go to Zevni. So, anything to add on, uh, Zevni's part? Um... Not really. She's uh, second in command of this Dragon Squad. She has mm, several commendations on file for um, her leadership of uh, um, away team missions and security teams. She's very serious, very businesslike, um, and very, very patient. Alrighty. Uh, up next, we'll do uh, Ensign Chize. Uh, Chize is the pilot and the youngest of the Dragon Squad. Uh, grew up on a lunar uh, colony of the Serato Draco and took the first opportunity to go to Starfleet. Right on. Up next, uh, we have Ensign Alera. Crap, that's me, right? I believe so. Uh, it's young, fresh out of the Academy. It's her first ship. Um, all about the shields and engineering and just all about the power. Very meticulous by the book. Very good. And then we have Ensign Astora. Uh, Astora she gets along with everybody. She's a real people person. Uh, she finds a way to mesh with everyone no matter what they're into. Uh, she's got very kind eyes and uh, currently she's walking up to Chize with a pad in her hand saying, they're adding another coat of paint. This is going to affect the warp field by 23 microns. I got to adjust the simulations. I'll take the pad. I think it will be fine. It doesn't matter how many, what your internal dampeners are like when you hit that warp field barrier going and the speed will be going. Have you seen what happens to you then? But well, I'm sure that we won't find out either way, because if it does happen at that speed, we'll never know, says Vavnet. Yes, and this is perfect. So anything you'd like to add about Vavnet? Ah, uh, she's sort of probably the most aloof of the group. Sort of comes off as a bit sort of disaffected if you don't know her, but no, she, she cares. She just doesn't show it as much. Uh, very unflappable, believe You've probably never seen her get riled up. Uh, she's the medic of the group. And uh, probably the only other notable thing is that she's turned down promotion at least twice at this point. As is noted. All right, carry on. Righto, Drake's fallen. We 
You've been I'd given. I'd imagine them. We do. Yeah, I imagine you guys. Yeah. Um, my manners are fairly strict. Um, as I inspect the drakes, as if a, a line officer was walking down a uh, in, a parade for inspection. Just making a big show of it for anyone who's actually paying attention on the shuttle bay. We know our mission. We're to tell these, we're to tell these uh, people back at home where we are and how to reach us. We've been given an experimental ship, a hefty supply of the Benonite fuel, and the well wishes of several thousand stranded souls. I, for one, don't intend to let these souls down. Do you? No, sir. Didn't think so. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't care for speeches. After all, I'm a lieutenant, junior grade. I've never had to practice them before. So let's get on board. Final system check. We depart in thirty minutes. Alrighty. So uh, I'm just going to show you all a handout, both for your own benefit and for the stream. Uh, this is more or less what the USS Radiance looks like. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, why would you ever use a circular nacelle? Well, the answer, my friends, is because I find them cool and because of Technobabble that basically at the speed you guys will be going at QSD, it's kind of important that you have extra control of your uh, bubble that is surrounding your ship. So by using circular pylons and circular nacelles, you make it a little bit easier to control the variances and make sure that, you know, you don't pull a Voyager and blow up as you fly out of the field. Uh, but that's more or less... It makes the war bubble a bit less uh, efficient in normal space, but, well, when you're in QSD, normal warp fluid dynamics sort of don't apply. Exactly. Um, again, the other things to note about this class is it is a scale 2, so it is considered a small craft. And if you were not here last week, we also decided on the Pathfinder Operations Profile. So the stats you see for the Radiance uh, should be accurate. But yeah, uh, before I kick you guys over to the bridge and we get things started, uh, this is not only a call for the Draco or the Dragon Squad, but for any... Um, little bits of RP that you'd like to get started before we sort of get into the main event. Hmm. Um, let, let me just clue up, queue up Flight of the Luck Dragon. <laughs> Speaking of luck, I walk up to Chize and I kind of, I snatch my pad back from her and before she can say anything, I push a uh, a lucky scale under a hand, and I say, "This is my lucky scale. Do not lose it, but don't drive us into any subspace eddies either." All right. I'll make sure we make it through in one piece. <laughs> I would um, remind you that taking that plucking scales is bad for your skin. I'm just sort of sitting in a... I don't know if we're... We're probably not big enough to have a command chair, but one of the ops consoles near the... Well, I actually have a bridge prepared for you all. Oh, do we now? Yep. So, uh, you might recognize where this originally came from, but uh, yeah, you guys walk on to the bridge, and I'm trying to figure out how far I can zoom out here so everybody can see. There we go. Um, so to kind of describe what you're seeing, it is a fairly larger bridge than, say, the original Delta Flyer had. Um, it, the original bridge plan we're using here was originally from the SS Raven, uh, otherwise known as the ship that Seven of Nine's parents were using to sort of tail the Borg. Um, and we're still kind of keeping that small feel. So, uh, that upper left exit, uh, that literally just says exit... That is the airlock out. And then the exit to crew quarters, there's a small room back there that has six bunks, one for each of you. Uh, it also has access via crawl space to the uh, engineering department. And by that, I mean you quite literally crawl a little bit and come up in a 
cramped crawl space that uh, gives you access to the engine, if need be. And then there's some very minor storage back there as well. Uh, but in all, this is a fairly compact ship. I'm probably sitting at my console going through the the, uh, the pre-flight checklist methodically. Okay, uh, check. Uh, let's see. Warp plasma field. Check. Pressure. Check. I'm going, I'd like to run a, a, a quick low-level diagnostic on the matter-antimatter assembly chamber. Certainly. And uh, Ensign Alara, you may assist on this as well. Uh, or Alara can do the, the, the role and you assist the store, which, whichever one you feel like doing. Uh, this is just going to be a very simple uh, reason in engineering, assisted by the Radiance's computers in engineering. And I'm going to say that the difficulty here is a zero, so free momentum. <laughs> I'm going to all assist. Okay. So there's one success. All right, you guys are up to two momentum. Yeah, I mean, you guys quite literally built this ship by yourselves, so you're seeing everything that you're expecting to see. Uh, the warp core uh, hasn't, like, been fully tested online yet, but so far the power readings look nominal. The EPS conduits seem to be handling the load just fine, and even the uh, QSD attachment, quote-unquote, is uh, ready to go, as far as you're able to tell. It's that that is also a check, sir. Excellent. Can we call you, sir? Uh, I, I'm going to have to get used to that, aren't I? I mean, yes, sir, you are. are. Can consider a good practice for your promotion. Very well, I guess, sir, it is. Um, radiance to radiance to ah. Sorry. This is the USS Radiance calling the USS Amalthea. Please come in. Captain Merthrin here. Go ahead. Captain Merthrin, with your permission, the USS Radiance is ready to proceed. Understood. You are cleared for undocking. Proceed along berth line 2A. Understood. Ensign Chazé, let's go. So Chizé, because I apparently love picking on people literally taking ships out for the first time, uh, if you could roll me a control and con, please, difficulty two. I mean, you're not going to, like, blow up the ship if you fail, but you will scratch the paint if you fail. Home operations and small craft, I'm guessing, are both focuses that apply? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Oh, and uh, in case <laughs> any of you missed the earlier Discord message, uh, do scroll up in the chat and make sure that you do have everything I listed out, because it will be rather important. Ooh, okay. So, Chizé, you know, you're, you're following the uh, aforementioned uh, sort of passageway outside of the hangar bay, when uh, the the radiance begins to list just slightly to the right. And, you know, you correct in time, but before you can, you know, fully sort of get out of the way, uh, you do lightly brush against one of the runabouts that's in the uh, massive hangar bay. Oh, the android and Gortag are not that. going to be happy. Uh Oh, send them my apologies. Getting used oh, to the new controls. Fifteen forms to fill out for that sort of thing. Well, well I you guess know what I think. You know what I think. That's as good a reason as any way to flee to the other end of the galaxy. Uh, ah. I guess. I guess we don't have to worry about the extra uh, micron thickness on that side of the hole. You'd think, but now I've got to adjust for that. Thanks, Day. Uh, that's that's one way to leave our mark, gals. Let's get out of here before they catch us. Woohoo! So, uh, Astora, uh, actually, I think all of you would see this. Uh, you're looking at your consoles, there is an incoming hail from Flight Deck Controller Sona. You don't have to answer it, but you are getting one. Um, actually, you know what? I think Vavnet will take that, because as the medic, she's not really doing anything else. Sure. Uh, hello, USS Radiance. How can I help you? USS Radiance, we noticed you're having a little bit of difficulty flying. Shall we send a competent pilot for you? 
Hey now. Oh, oh, don't worry. I'm sure I've got something that can uh, fix the wounded pride. I mean, I am a medic. You'll have to excuse me. I, I have learned to make jokes, but I do not understand this humor. <laughs> I'll explain it to you when we get back from the Alpha Quadrant. See you later, dear. <laughs> if if we could see Sona, she would just kind of do that data thing where her head twitches a little bit and she just sort of shrugs and goes back to her work. Um, but yeah, the uh, otherwise, with you know the little paint scratching out of the way, Radiance gets out of the Jupiter class and you see, as you look back uh, at the fleet, uh, the Amalthea is more or less serving as a hub of construction. Uh, the, I would say, maybe about a fourth of the frame of your starbase has been constructed at this point, and there's all manner of work bees and other small craft that are moving supplies. Uh, there's a ton of people out in EVA suits, uh, just basically welding things in place, moving uh, panels and you know, locking them in. It's pretty much everything that you're expecting to see with the construction of a starbase. Uh, but what's relevant for you guys is you're easily able to sort of swoop up and over the top of the Amalthea and you angle away from the planet Suthia and you uh, set course for Sol. Now, uh, we are going to do a roll here, an actual roll for activating QSD, because not only do I think it will give us momentum, but I also think it's good from a thematic standpoint. So I will put that on the screen so everyone can see it. So uh, what we're dealing with here is you must make, uh, Chize, you must make a control and a con, and the ship is assisting with engines con, and one other character may assist with either a control engineering or a control in science. The good news is that because you're only a scale two, that's the difficulty of the task. I'm going to burn a momentum for a third die. Alrighty. Does the assisting person get to roll uh, to add their focus? Uh, yeah. If they have a focus that applies, they can. Just remember that assisting is only one die. Right. I'd like to assist if, in case anyone else, you know, anyone else objects uh, to that. Ooh, I, I don't have any objections because I'm definitely not on those stats, but I would make a comment to Shize about, uh, could you get us out of here quickly before, you know, the officers find out what we did to that runabout, please? How about before we blow up from that complication? <laughs> yeah, blow up from the complication. <laughs> We're supposed to go to Earth. Why are we in Tholian space? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Just, you know, well, show up, you know, like, oh, hey, we're, oh, we should have brought Nostrum well, with us. Well, it was, it was fun playing ah, uh, I, the Dragon Squad I am for a little Strome, bit. Nostrum's twin, and I am here to take revenge. <laughs> oh, okay. So, good news, you guys pass. Bad news, there is a complication. I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to not be as harsh as I could be here. So, Chize, you put in the proper sort of procedure to spool up the QSD. Your deflector, the Radiance's deflector, begins to emit a uh, subspace sort of focusing pulse and a corridor into, su uh, into what is it? Um, I don't Quantum remember space. what it's actually called. It's not null space. It's not subspace. Space. It's, it's some other kind of space. Slip space. Um, slip space. Thank you. Slip space. You know, for some reason, it slipped my mind. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you get two momentum as well. Uh, so as you move into slip space, there's a little bit of rocking, and I would like someone besides Chize if you could hit the system hit macro for me. Normally, oh, I, I don't would have do that it. Up. Uh, I could do it if nobody else wants to, but I did want to give. I, where is that? I don't see that in the macro bar. Hmm, uh, should be. Oh, I didn't make it visible to all players. Now you should see it. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, as you move into slip space, there is lots of turbulence at first. Uh, the computers and the those of you working the consoles are really struggling to uh, sort of smooth out the ride. And in the process, the main computer does go down. And let me just double check. I don't think computer damage does anything major. But we will look all the same. So let's see. I mean, it does knock the camera sideways half the time. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Uh, the computer system cannot be used to perform or assist any task. All other tasks attempted which are assisted by the ship increase in complication range by two until that restore minor action has been performed. All right, so just note that you have the, the one breach to computers. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it takes not even, you know, a couple minutes, if that, to get the computers back online. But you do still have the breach. And you really already... needed that extra coat of paint, guys, right? Somehow I take I feel that I must take responsibility for pushing you guys to finish this ship beforehand or before schedule. Let's hope this is not a bad omen. If you happen to have any more luck scales, perhaps you should pass them around. Well, but just before that, let's actually figure out where we are. Well, uh, I like to run um Oh, wait, it's Chizé, okay. Well, I mean, it, it could either be uh, Chizé rolling a uh, an insight con, or uh, Astora could roll a uh, a reason science. Or you could just sort of look out the view screen. It's pretty obvious that uh, you are in a slip space corridor. You are traveling in QSD at the moment. Okay, well, it's working at least. I don't think we can tell where we're going until we emerge anyway. We are in... And That's non. a good one, actually. Yeah. That's the problem with slipstream travel is you don't know where you're going until you're there. I, I'd like to run a sensor scan of the forward tunnel to see if there's any disturbances like eddies or uh, gravimetric interference affecting the slipstream tunnel. It's a very prudent thing to do. Uh, go ahead and roll me a reason science, and if someone could have the ship assist with sensor science... Very I nice. Two successes. Let's see if the ship gets you any momentum. Just about to roll it. Gets one. you one momentum. You're up to four. Uh, so, good news. Your... How do I want to say this? So normally, the problem with QSD is that ships are too large. Uh, so even like an Intrepid or even a Nova class has difficulties because of how much variances in sub or not subspace in slip space um sort of affect the larger craft and sort of scale two craft or the radiance or a delta flyer that's sort of the upper limit of when you're small enough that you don't have to worry about a lot of the variances so you are seeing that there are some variances but due to your size and due to the technology on board you're perfectly fine for the moment. The slipstream tunnel looks all clear ahead. Minimal interference from gravimetrics. Yeah. We are too small. We are, we're basically riding through the waves. I'm suddenly bemoaning the fact that my c captain's chair, command chair, doesn't have a footstool. But, well, let's just see how far this tunnel goes, gals. So, uh, how long did it say we were? This is going to be days. Uh, well, I, I'd imagine we're like doing it in one day hops, just to make sure we don't get wildly off course. I thought the thing said we have to power down every hour for a recharge. Oh, uh, I should probably qualify that. So that does not apply for any scale two vessels flying at QSD. Uh, ah. Scale two vessels <laughs> may fly indefinitely as long as there are no problems along the way. Fair but enough. I but I still think the idea of every day shutting it down, getting our bearing, letting it cool off, I think that is actually a good idea. Agreed. We'll, all, we'll have to sleep sometime, and I'd prefer not to sleep in QSD. Uh, yeah, probably a better chance of not having problems happen when the appropriate people are, you know, awake to handle them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You know, Bolians find being born next to a warp core pretty lucky. I wonder what would happen if they were born next to a QSD warp core. Uh, maybe they wouldn't be blue. They would be, like, yellow or orange or something. Uh, that, that, uh, that, that's not how Bolian physiology works. I, I mean, I, I didn't study xenobiology in the academy, so I was trying to make a joke. Well, it took... It took even our genetic scientists about 50 years to figure out why all of our heads 
and uh, horn shapes come out differently despite our parents. So, yeah, Bolians are probably just as complicated in their own way. Yes, but one question modern science hasn't answered is, how do we get the uniforms on? Um, I just look at my... I just sort of tug at my tunic and people realize that I've cut the upper collar out for a larger you, headspace. You you mean you guys didn't go see that Cardassian about putting extra snaps on the shoulders so that way it would come on easier? No, that's those are against regulation. I mean, they're only against regulation if someone checks. I mean... But I, and no. per... per Personally, I find Garrick's very good at uh, making the alterations blend in. There's also an invention called a zipper from Earth that could come in handy. Now that's just tech heresy. That's just crazy talk. <laughs> what is the zipper you speak of? <laughs> they had to beam me into mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's the kind of banner I, that I was hoping for. I love it. I, I, I mean, they clearly have the technology even in the 22nd century, as Ensign Tilly sh shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to very well, briefly uh, look away from Dragon Squad because we have an event back on the Amalthea. So, Prier, typical day. Nothing's oh, no. going wrong. When someone Which steps only into your mean... bay, it is not Jensen. It is Vedic Parabe. No, no, no. Oh, a question oh. mark? We'll look. look we'll look away if you uh, take him out. <laughs> Vedic, what can I do for you? Well, as the doctor of the fleet, as it were, I wish to do due diligence. I admit my earlier. Attempted departure may have been hasty, and I did not properly check if there were any issues like diseases or biogens or other medical concerns for myself and the rest of the Bajorans to visit uh, Suthia. Ah. See, when you're hasty, you make mistakes. And almost on cue, you hear your door open again, and in steps Jensen. Uh, Jensen is covered in blood. You you don't know why, but he's covered in blood, and he's stumbling, and he literally falls onto the Vedic, knocking them both over, getting the Vedic completely covered in Jensen's blood. And Jensen goes, Doc! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, God, it's gotten on you, too. And the Vedic is furious. Like he, his, there's a vein in his 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 temples that's just sort of throbbing, and he he looks like he's about to explode. But he's he's not said anything. He's just sort of humping and trying to extricate himself from the tangle of limbs. Jensen, what happened to you? As I'm helping him up and putting him on the table. Well, I I wasn't on the holodeck this time. I'm surprised. Continue. Well, uh, I was I was helping with uh, Conduit A on the station, and it's right about then that the Vedic literally starts yelling at Jensen. And I'm not going to replicate it because I would blow out the microphone. But if you can imagine the most colorful insults for someone's heritage and whether or not their mother was a hamster and their father smelt of elderberries, it's kind of what's going on here. Uh, and I'll, look the, I'll look at the Vedic and go, Vedic, that's not very religious of you. He, uh, he does pause mid-yell, straightens himself up, adjusts his ruined uniform, and says, Perhaps you're right. Still, this man is an idiot. Why do you tolerate him? Because he's my idiot. Very well. Well, I have to go get changed now in a sonic shower. If you could forward that relevant medical data to my pad that would be much appreciated i will do so thank you vedic for your pleasurable visit and he he humps and he walks out in hasty or he walks out hastily and the moment he's gone jensen immediately brightens up and he says is he gone 
Yes, he's gone. Oh, good. Then, Doctor, don't worry. This is fake blood. What? Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. I get injured a lot, but I, I saw the vedic coming in here, and I know how much you guys on the command staff hate him. So, I thought I'd. I mean, you don't think I went over? I went too far, did you? Jensen, I don't know whether you're brilliant, or if I should reprimand you. Uh, I like the first one, sir. So do I. I'm just going to look the other way. <laughs> Very good, sir. And if you need me in the future... So he hops off the bio bed, walks about two steps, trips over himself, and hits his head on the floor. Oh, Jensen. Come here, let's look at this. <laughs> As I pick him up and put him back on the bio bed. And now you have the fun task of working out what blood is fake and what's real. Yeah. Also, where did he get it from? <laughs> Whose so blood is questions. it? Computer. Blood. Warm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See, now I'm just wondering, does the replicator, like, put it in a glass? Does it put it in a bowl? Does it just squirt out like a squirt gun? So many questions. <laughs> They're just covered, like, the replication is just bleeding on the floor. No, no, don't worry, it's just malfunctioning, it's not possessed. <laughs> oh, dear. And on the... Uh, in the yeah. starship. Yeah. Uh, but on the subject of possessed things, we're going to cut back to Draco, or Dragon Squad. And, yeah, you guys are, uh, we'll say at this point, it's been about, maybe about half a day of travel. Uh, at this point, you have had a chance to test out some of your more minor systems. Uh, by that I mean you've discovered that the replicator, for whatever reason, is only spitting out Ractigenos. Doesn't matter what you order, you get a Ractigeno double sweet. And uh, the other thing you've noticed, if you go back into the crew quarters or into the, the sort of crawl space... Uh, there is a very high-pitched, barely audible sort of squeaking sound, almost like a uh, a hamster or a mouse running on a wheel. And you you haven't quite nailed down where any of that's coming from. I'm sorry, Captain or uh, Ensign. I mean, Sir, uh, Ma'am. I'm not sure what to call anyone. Uh, I've had like six Rectogenos, but I, I I'm trying to do maintenance and uh, maintain the the, the engines uh, polar the engine flow. It's. I, Two more engineers would have been lovely for this, but we don't have enough space. And and I, I, I'm seeing three of everything. It's how we're handling bathroom breaks exactly. It's because I, I can't have anyone relieve me to relieve myself. To you know, I'm I, sure I, Internestora can cover you. When I find the source of the squeak, I am going to break it in two and add it to my kill bracelet. I'm going to spend oh, two threat. I what, what should I handle first? Should I handle the squeak? Should I handle the uh, right the Juno situation? Should I handle the uh, whoa, 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 sorry uh, the just the quantum flux here again? Okay, uh, handle yourself. Um, and, uh, should I handle the the, the pressure gauges? Uh, what's my first task, Kenzo? Lieutenant uh, first, if, if first, I can interject, uh, I am spending two threat because as Alara basically goes on, you know, her hyperactive uh, speech. Uh, you hear a very high-pitched squeak, uh, more high-pitched than usual, and a panel drops out uh, onto the floor in between where Vinleth and Chizay are seated, and on top of the panel is a Tribble. It's okay. I can fix the panel. I can fix the panel. I will. Hang on, is that? And Vavnet's actually going to come up and like whip out a tricorder and scan it to confirm. It is indeed a Tribble. Is that Captain. what? How? Uh, and she's just gonna like pick it up and look at it. It coos the way tribbles do. I think you found your bad omen. <sighs> I'm guess. Okay. I, I suspect it's bad luck. I suspect it is not recommended to open the airlock while in QSD. No, not recommended. I don't think we can even activate transport. I mean, on the plus side, there isn't actually any food on board, so it's not like it can eat anything. Well, and on the plus side, if we run into any Klingons, we have the ultimate weapon. <sighs> well, oh, wait a second. Hold on. And Vavnet's going to, like, do try to establish how old this Tribble is. Okay. Uh, roll me a Reason Medicine difficulty one. 
I'm ready. Uh, when he, she gets done, I'd like to roll an Does internal system. Does the biology apply? Does it focus? Uh, it would, yes. And yeah, we'll do uh, an internal system scans after we resolve this one. All right, for reason, medicine. And just yeah, in case anyone of... wasn't worrying, I there is a reason why the triple's here. This isn't just me being a git. I, there actually is a reason for it. Yep. I'll take a momentum to get a third die. All right. They're not mutually exclusive. You can be a git, and it can be here for a reason. Yeah, this is true. It's a Borg Tribble that's here to uh, assimilate all of us. Tribble of Borg. Well, very nice. You have capped out on momentum. Uh, I will say, uh, Vavnet, with your scan, you're able to tell that this... This Tribble's maybe about a day old. So, probably about... Uh, I would say it, it had to have come on board uh, right after you guys final, uh, finalized construction, but before you launched... But uh, the age of the triple does seem to indicate that either the hangar bay has a triple problem, or will shortly, or the Greater Amalthea has a triple problem. Yep. Yes. Um. So this triple didn't come from. Yeah. This didn't spontaneously this appear, on... did it? No. No. This thing was definitely alive before. Before we finished constructing and probably got on board from the Amalthea. Very well. Let's drop out a QSD. We should probably run a system check anyways and drop a message back to the Amalthea. Very I well. Start. I shall um, scan for triples, I guess. Hmm. Please do. I roll to scan for triples. Okay. Uh, we'll say since Astora is the uh, science officer science officer of the crew, uh, we'll have Astora lead and Vavnik can assist. Uh, so, Astora, you're rolling a reason in science. Vavnik, you're assisting with a reason medicine. And the ship will be assisting with a sensor's science. All right, I already see three successes. And I thought the Amalthea had... Had uh, trouble with the Rigelian uh, fever. Oh, there's a lot of things wrong with the ship. All right. Well, uh, as long as the ship does not roll a complication, that will basically give you guys four floating momentum. Alrighty. So uh, sensors as... science for the ship? Yep, sensor science for the ship. Okay, so uh, you do have four floating momentum, which I will say you can use to either ask me questions or uh, what I like to do with floating momentum these days is use it to create an advantage. And you've got enough floating that you could make two advantages. Uh, but let me tell you what you find out first. Uh, so what you find uh, with you two working together, you find that luckily this is the only triple that is present uh, in the USS Radiance. However, for now. Yeah, for now. Uh, however, you have noticed something rather important in your internal system scan. Uh, there are uh, some microfractures that are beginning to form along the hull. Now, some microfractures are to be expected. I mean, even though you can travel at uh, QSD for longer t periods, thanks to not only your size and to the Benamite, uh, there still are fractures that are building up. It's not going to be an issue... If, you know, you go for like another day or two, but if you go like, say, half a week without fixing these micro fractures, it will start being a problem. We will need to go out of QSD for quite a bit for me to uh, fix these micro fractures. Uh, and I mean, well, I could also look for any other problems in the chip structure, but. That's fine. I'd just make sure that I, I you go to the bathroom a, first. I, I can think of a good advantage we might get, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how easy it is. Uh, would we be able to make an advantage that the microfractures that do exist are stuff we can fix in the field rather than having to go all the way back to the amount? Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, I will say that that will require one of two things. Uh, either one of you is going to have to go out on an EVA suit and fix it that way. Or you're gonna have to find a planet nearby to set down on. 
I vote for the second one. That sounds like shenanigans could happen. Yes. I agree. Why not? Yes. Um, now, which one of us is the science officer again? That is Astora. Mm-hmm. Hello. Astora, can you please just do us? Can you please see if there's any M We will need us? to have to drop out of QSD for that to happen, Captain. Oh, oh I think I think you already dropped out to, to do the, the internal scan. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a, a trouble falling out of the roof is as good a reason as any to drop out of QSD. Mm-hmm. Astora, can you please have a look for some place we could set down for repairs? Looking for an M-class with suitable atmosphere, Captain. Zevni, could you please let the Amalthia know that they might have a potential trouble problem? See if you can tell Gorteg, uh, and let me know what his response is. Uh, yes, sir? How, do we know how far away we are? Uh, yes. Well, there's there's going to be a series of checks here. So, Chize, since you are sort of skilled in astro-navigation, um, I would like you to do me a reason and con, please, and the ship will assist with sensors and con. What is the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty here is a two. I can roll the ship. All right. I'm going to spend a momentum for a third die. Okay. Whoops. All right. So there's the two successes you need. Uh, then that was sensors plus con, right? Correct. All right, so you get that momentum back, you stay at six. Uh, so Chizay, uh, the rough calculation is it's about 300 light years for one hour of QSD, which is something like 2.63 times 10 to the sixth uh, multiples of C, if I remember my math properly. Uh, you guys have been going for about half a day, so let's say 10 hours times uh, 300, so you've got about 3,000 light years. Which means, uh, Zevni, when you attempt to hail the Amalthea, now, granted, there has been advances in uh, communications, but uh, I will say that you're really only able to get a short message to the Amalthea, and it's going to be one way only, other than for them to confirm they've received it. Uh, so I will gonna say... going to be a delay. Yeah, because of the delay. So I will say that there is a limit of five words you can say in this message. Uh, Could I use a (laughs) floating momentum and my subspace theory focus in order to give her just a little bit more bandwidth and an extra word? Sure, I'll allow it. But I will say that that will cost two uh, two momentum. Alright, the two remaining floating. Okay. I've uh, I've uh, attenuated the subspace antenna, but all I can give you is just a, a little tiny extra bit of data packet. We'll take every we'll take every character we can get. All right, I uh, do see some potentials. Which one are you going with? <laughs> uh, I. <I've... laughs> that's that's the one you should go with. No. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think I'll go with uh, m- my first one, uh, Amalthea. You have triple trouble on board. One, two, three, four. I'll let you. I'll, I'll let you squeak by with on board. <laughs> All right. So uh, we well, cut I mean, it, back. It is one word. Eh, it depends on what area of the globe you reside in, but you're not wrong. Uh, so we are going to cut to the bridge of the Amalthea. Uh, pretty much, besides coordinating uh, construction crews, it's a Fairly uh, tame shift for the bridge crew of the Amalthea. When uh, Lieutenant Derval, uh, you're getting a communication coming in. And it is Captain. apparently from the Radiance. Uh, I'll just quickly read it. Captain, we have received a text message from the Radiance. Is, has something gone wrong? Not for them, sir, but it potentially is a problem for us. Uh, The word is as follows. Amalthea, you have triple trouble on board. What? What is triple? 
we have Commander trouble. Commander Gortek, you have you have already earned um, uh, com commendation for your glorious combat against these tribbles. Perhaps you could lead our forces. Uh, Gortek starts spinning in his chair, looking around everywhere, on the ground, um, on the ceiling panels, on his console, under his console. He'll move Darval out of the way to look under Darval's console. <laughs> you know what? Uh, because I think it would be uh, because I think it's hilarious. Mirthrun mm -hmm. um, sort of, of course, immediately picks up that Gorteg is really panicked. So now he's a little panicked. Uh, Gorteg, what, 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 what's going on? What, what's a trouble? They're the greatest menace to the Klingon Empire. Right. They are I, our I greatest trigger, enemy. Trigger alert immediately. And <laughs> red alert. All security I thought, forces. I thought that was the Romeo operations. Uh, these are much more cunning. They attack us from different yeah. ways. They they poison and eat all of our food, and they starve us out. Instead of the 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 Romulans bombing us, these things they starve you. Do you know how hard it is, or do you know how just terrifying it is to starve to death, Captain? Uh, I have uh, found I have found a historical re a Gore -Tec record. Gore-Tek pulls his pulls his phaser. <laughs> I found a historical record of a tribble. I am put, putting it up on the holographic view screen right now. All right. So, Derval, I'd like you to roll me an inside con, please. Difficulty okay. zero. This should be amusing. Meanwhile, I'm sending out orders to have all the security forces armed with Type 3 phasers based on Vortex. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything inside I hope for. Con. <laughs> so, so what, what's the trouble comes on the screen? Uh, let's see. So Doesn't look too dangerous. I'm guessing I don't have a good focus for this. If you have awareness or uh, basically anything that would involve people reading, uh, this would apply. Not really. Okay. All right. So you do get a floating momentum, and Darval, uh, you notice that Ensign Hamasi over there is looking a little bit difficult, and you're the only one who's going to hear this. You hear her. You hear the purr of a tribble. And she says, "Shh, quiet. They're onto us." Do we have a? a uh, did we have the hologram out? Yeah. Now, yeah. now, as uh, Darval pushes the button, there is a holographic massive tribble uh, floating above where usually you have the uh, incoming communications come in. Should not so, be hard to find. They are very large. This so is not, not to scale. Size. So when if they are, they are larger. So what size are they normally? So uh, they are. Roughly, I'm turning it to life. Actually, sir, if you'd like to see a life-size triple, perhaps you can ask Ensign Hamasi. Mirthrin will sort of turn to look at Hamasi. Her eyes go wide, and she just tries to look innocent, but we know she's not. So, oh, uh, 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 out of character, where does she have the triple? Well, you don't see it right now. You would actually have to physically stand up and go over to her thing first. Uh, but I think I think uh, Walter's trying to say something, so let's let him get his words in. So when everybody goes from the large holographic projection of the triple to the 100th size, and then everybody turns to Hamasi, when it kind of... The, that whoosh of everybody turning, uh, they will notice that Gorteg is now taking cover behind his his console with his phaser out pointed towards Hamasi. <laughs> and Hamasi just says, uh, why is everyone staring at me? <sighs> Shut up! Alright, so Master going okay. Alright, everyone, calm down, Gorteg. Put the phaser away. <sighs> I'm going to stand up from my chair, take a few strides over to her, and just see where the cooing might be coming from. So, you know, she's trying her best to hide it behind the back, and you know, you play that game where you try to look around her, and she tries to turn so you can't, but she eventually goes up and says, alright, fine, I found it in the Arboretum, here! And she puts a big old tribble into Darval's chest. Oh. Gorteg will stammer and fall backwards over his chair. <sighs> what? That, that, is it juvenile? Ensign Hamasa, you should be well aware of the regulations about un... Uh, unlicensed animals on the bridge, unless they are pro unless they are properly certified as service companion animals. Uh, more to the will... point, you said you found this in the arboretum. That is correct, sirs. Burn it all. Okay, I am going to have to do some reading on these tribbles before I figure out what 
what to do, but um, Gorteg, calm down for a second. I mean, the thing obviously does not that dangerous. I mean, does it even have teeth? It's not the teeth that you have to worry about. It's the fact that it can multiply on its own. Given enough time to multiply, it'll eat your entire food source. It will start eating you. I, right. I mean, I'm assuming we're not going to wait around nine months for it to multiply. So. It's um, not nine months. We're talking minutes. So as as the scene cuts from Gorteg to the captain, back to Darval, now Darval's holding two tribbles. Yep. Uh, uh, captain likes see? The uh, Hold on. Did, did that tribble just give birth? Yes. Yes, it did. Uh, captain, there's the call from engineering. Uh, engineering, go ahead. Uh, Freepark kind of pops up on a display, and you, you don't really see all of them. It's just the chest up to, like, maybe his eyes, and he's like, you know, building a space station, that's one thing. Fixing the fleet, that's another thing. But, you know, I got an odd, my maintenance crews have been an odd number of uh, complaints about noises and, and, and power conduits fluctuating, and then he kind of sits down, and you see a tribble on the top of his head. They're in everything. Okay, I think I am beginning to grasp the scale of the situation here. Is Are they edible if they become food stuff? <laughs> are they let, are they let, let's work on containment first, alright? Gorteg is just seething, sitting in his chair, just glaring at the two that Darval, the now three that Darval are, is holding. Okay, so uh, Gorte, clearly you've had uh, experience with these things before. How do we contain them? You kill them all? You shove them out of an airlock? I, I move closer with my phaser and be like, put the trebles down, I will take care of this. You, you, <laughs> you torpedo the planet they are on from space? Uh. Maybe we can work on the. Maybe we can start with uh, altering the bio scanners on the ship to target their bio signs and single them out. Captain, Captain. However, you get these things off my ship, I don't care. But you better do it before they get into the biomimetic gel packs. We're already having maintenance issues with power fluctuations. They're in the EPS EPS conduits. Darval, you're noticing that there is another call. This time, it is from Drake. Uh, this is the bridge. Go ahead, Dr Mr. Drake. Is the bridge aware of the fact that there's a whole lot of triples on the ship? Uh, Darval yes. is now uh, Dar Darval is now just juggling triples. Yes, we appear to have triples on the bridge, as well as several other places. <laughs> Can someone please record Gortex's face right now? Uh, I'm sure it'll be on the security cameras. Merthrin to Amalthia, general general category one bio alert. Begin containment procedures. <clears throat> uh, yes, Captain. I will have the Marines support your security staff to um, contain these vicious little animals. Prayer will message Cap up to the bridge. Someone, someone set off. Some, can we set up some force fields in the hangar bay? Like create a quarantine zone to chuck them all in. Well, maybe. Prayer to the bridge. Prayer's calling in. Prayer, prayer. Yes, we know about the troubles. Oh, I was calling to ask what the problem was. I didn't. I haven't found troubles yet. We, <sighs> we have troubles. So Gortex. Uh, yes. Gortex stands up. Good. They haven't gotten to sick bay yet. Captain, I believe I am needed in sickbay, and he will walk out the door. <laughs> um, while he's on the way, uh, Priya, do you have any idea how to stop a triple infestation? Well, they're born pregnant from what I've uh, read up on, so they're not exactly easy to get rid of. All right. Um, uh, so it seems a little drastic, but like... Could you engineer a virus or something? Uh, I could That's attempt. That's not asking for trouble. But I'd be afraid of it 
becoming the virus mutating and becoming either airborne or start to affect uh, the different species we have on board. Captain, yeah, fair point. Oh well. All right, we'll just use standard biocontainment procedures for now. Captain, Which, if I may. Uh, uh, yes, please. We have a Klingon intelligence a vessel in orbit uh, as part of our fleet now. Perhaps they have some... Since the Klingons view these as very hostile creatures, logically, I might add, perhaps they have some means of combating them. I mean, are you sure they won't just open fire on the Amalthea? Uh, logically, sir, we could take them. Fair. Uh, uh, what was the name of the bird of prey again? Uh, yes. Uh, real quick before I get to that, uh, Draval, you're getting a call from Ambassador Lena, the uh, Marissa ambassador. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Captain, the amba Ambassador Marina is calling. Shall I put her on the bridge, or would you prefer to take this in your quarters, or your ready room? Uh, you know what, we're going to be flat uh, flat to the wall anyway. I'll start taking it in my reading room. Uh, I'm Mr. Lena, this is Captain Merthrin. Go ahead. Uh, he says as he walks into his ready room. All right, so we cut to your ready room. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll just throw her token on there for uh, helping with Theater of the Mind. But on one of your screens, uh, you do see the ambassador, and she says, Ah, thank you, Captain Merthrin. I was simply curious. Do you know anything about this? And she holds up a tribble. Oh yeah. Oh, dear. Is she uh, is she on the planet yes. or is she still in the space? Or is uh, she still she the is on the planet at the moment. All right. So Merthrin sees that and goes, "Oh." Then they oh. just swears. On the plus side, they probably don't breathe. You can just drown them. Okay. Um, that is a trouble. Uh, they are. Well, they're not particularly aggressive, but they breed at a rate of about one litter every ten hours, and they are a massive biohazard, so start getting that under control as quickly as possible. We'll send people down to help. Oh. Well, I called to ask if you could send more. Uh, s s sorry, say again? Well, so by answering, she doesn't really smile, but she opens up whatever would fare for a mouth in the Marissa, because it's not where you would usually be on a humanoid. So, you know, we'll say that some part of her opens up and it's like a toothy maw, and she just pops the triple in and starts chewing it. It's <laughs> quite the delicacy, actually. Tastes, tastes quite well. I, I, I have, I actually, I have a mental image for how this works. There's this one artist who does it, but basically I'm imagining just like the throat just opens up into like a lamprey-like maw. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Blade 2? Like... So Merthrin will say, uh, that was mildly horrifying, but... Um, so they, are, they aren't they are poisonous to you? I mean, we've been eating them since they were introduced a few days ago, and frankly, we were just wondering where the hell they came from. A few, okay, well... Um, Good news, you won't actually need us to send any more. Provide them with food and they will just breed to infinity. Um, yeah, uh, we'll get back to you. We have an infestation. We need to get it under control on our ship. Very good. And I must say, you keep excellent stock breeding creatures. She pops another triple and the screen goes dark. Yeah, yeah, M M yeah. M Merthyrin probably sort of cut the feed as soon as he saw she was about to eat another one. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we're going to come right. back. Uh, Merthyrin, Merthyrin to uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> Merthyrin to the Bur Burrell bird of prey, and uh, yeah. you get uh, Captain fun. Jamon, and Captain Jamon says, "Ah." Captain Merthrin, how might I be of assistance? I have a mission that requires your strong, the, your strongest willed crew. Oh. Preferably the bloodthirsty one. <laughs> Just simply point us where you need us. Uh, start with engineering on the Amalthea, Amalthea and uh, do give your crew warning. We have a triple infestation. 
He stares at you blankly for a good 30 seconds. And then the transmission just goes dark. And after a moment, you, Ensign Hamasi calls in and says, Uh, Captain, the bird of prey has cloaked and moved off away from the Amalthea. <sighs> Shields up. <clears throat> oh dear alright so we're going to come back to uh, Dragon Squad now and yeah you guys have found a appropriate planet that would suit your needs uh, in particular yeah. uh, it is a uh, system that contains a red dwarf with four planets uh, three of the planets are class D's and the second world is a class M now before we set down I'm going to literally take out a small ceremonial dagger and stab the triple. All right. It gives it a, it gives a uh, wounded. Do you eat it after? No. No, it's it's all just fat, really. Fat in a pregnant belly. Take it. Take us down, please. So, uh, Ensign Chize, if you could roll me a control and con, please. Uh, difficulty 2, and the ship will assist you with an engine's con. Try to be a little gentle. We still have a lot of micro fractures. Try to avoid any turbulence or storm fronts. What am, am I... With a, what? Sorry, I blanked. Mm-hmm. Control con, difficulty two, and if someone can get the ship's uh, engines con. Sure, I can roll ship. Using a uh, momentum. Would helm operations comp uh, work as a focus? Most definitely. Look at that. Look at that. That's uh, three floating momentum, even. So, yeah. Uh, you know, Chize, you pilot the ship on down and... I'll put us on this map so you guys can see what's going on. But uh, you break atmosphere pretty dang easily. Uh, you fly down, and you're able to see that the surface is primarily a barren, arid desert. And as you fly along, uh, you see that there are these sort of rocky spires that tower up into the sky. I mean, these things are easily uh, the size of uh, modern-day skyscrapers. But probably what's most interesting of all is that around these spires are floating rocks. And these rocks are very sizable. Uh, I would say that the, the smallest of them is about the size of a bus, and the largest could probably be a building of its own. And uh, it's pretty easy for you to find a suitable spot on the, the cracked, sort of dry riverbed and set the radiance down. Uh... Excuse me, sir. Uh, permission once we land to perhaps take uh, Chief Vavnet out and patrol the area, look for life signs or any hostile creatures that may impede us with our repairs? Certainly. And uh, and, <clears throat> and Vevni will just kind of look at Vavnet and kind of nod to, you know, grab, grab our kit together. All right. And we have landed... Mm -hmm. We have indeed. Nice landing. I'd like to help assist with the repairing the micro fractures. Of course. Alrighty. So I'm just going to throw your tokens on here and we'll separate you guys out uh, to see who's where. Might help if I was on the right layer, though. Alright. So, uh, Zevni and uh, Vavnet, you guys are going to go off and patrol the area. So we'll put you over here on the right. Uh, Alara, uh, I imagine you're helping out or actually doing the microfractures? Probably, yeah. Okay, and you're being assisted by Astora, if I heard correctly. Yep. Uh, which leads, uh, Vinleth and, uh, Chize. What are you guys doing? I'll assist with the repairs. Okay, we'll put you over here. Um, I may as well go with the scanning team. I don't have any skills mm -hmm. that would help out. Yep. Other than work Z faster. Zavnit's not a... She's not, she's not a ship fixer. Gotcha. <laughs> so, as you guys come out of the airlock, uh, you realize that stepping out onto the surface of this world, there is a noticeable increase in gravity. Now, it's nothing you can't handle, 
but it is a bit more laborious, laborious, however you say it, um, to move and to breathe. Uh, if you want an actual number, uh, it's about 1.36 times Earth norm. Uh, so, you guys, as Serato Draco, you can handle that no problem. Uh, just know that as long as you are operating on this world, your complication range is a 18 to 20 for all tasks. Works for me. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, let's do the microfracture team first. Uh, this is going to be a extended task. Uh, as you can imagine, that's going to involve a control engineering or a control science. Uh, this is going to have a work track of 12, a default difficulty of 3, and a, uh, we'll say, a magnitude of 4. And I'll type this that isn't out. time. No, if this is not timed, as far as you know, it's you're you know you're not on a, a time limit or anything. There's no like storm bearing down. <laughs> not at the moment, no. Not yet. Don't give him ideas, please. That's where the fun comes in. I can use my talent then. What's the role again? Uh, the role is either a control and science or a control and engineering. And I would say you can assist each other on this. And just remember that the first task is a difficulty three. Um, I'm going to buy an extra die with our crazy amount of momentum. All right. So you go down to five. The... Yeah, none of my focus is probably apply for fixing hull. Well, uh, you still succeed pretty damn well. Uh, I believe that gets you a grand total of one momentum back, so you're back up to six. We said right. difficulty three, right? So that's... Yeah. So you, you got four successes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Alara, uh, you're going to roll me a six challenge die, please. Six challenge die. All right. So uh, that is enough for a breakthrough. Uh, would you want to reroll those zeros, or are you just going to keep it as is? Keep it as is. All right. Okay, greedy. So, uh, you complete uh, 5 out of 12 on the work track, and the difficulty goes down to a 2. Uh, so, you know, with the three of you working together, you're easily able to sort of set up a, a I guess you would call it an assembly line or a, uh, a, a repair line. Uh, Chize and Astora sort of uh, pinpoint where the microfractures are, and then Alara comes in and sort of smooths them out, applies the... Uh, expanding sealing solution to seal up the fractures and you're, you're doing pretty well uh, but before we do the next roll we're gonna cut to the scanning team so scanning team uh, you guys you know you fan out a little bit uh, start doing a, a lazy circle around the ship and it's pretty much what you're seeing on the screen right now uh, it's very flat save for the uh, big old rocky spires uh, the nearest spire is maybe about a mile off. Uh, if you wanted to go that far, you can. But uh, I'm just curious what you guys would be doing at the moment. I mean, I am curious about the floating rocks. As am I. Let's uh, go. Yes? M might as well. I mean, if nothing else, we can um, uh, pinpoint this world and give uh, the rest of the fleet some sort of uh, information that there is a Class M world, even though it's quite a bit away from them. Agreed. Any information is good information. Tell me, have either of you ever hunted a bulette? Uh -huh. you, you, uh, you mean a, a land shark? Yes, they were apparently fairly a mythical mythical creatures back from the back on the Trisai Flats back home. They were told the legends say they could burrow underground for days at a time and attack from nowhere. And then you know, disappear. If uh, if I wasn't too sure, I'd almost say that sounds like foreshadowing. Uh, I would hope not. Tried hunting them several times as a kid. Turns out they weren't extinct, but kids can dream, right? True. Uh, so, uh, we'll say that you guys, you know, walk very leisurely. It takes you maybe... 10, 20 minutes, if that. And yeah, you kind of get close to enough to one of the spires to start running some scans. 
Uh, let's see. Let's have whichever one of you wants to take the lead. Uh, if you could roll me a reason science. And then uh, the other two may assist with their own reason science. And the difficulty right. here is going to be a three for reasons that will become evident if you succeed. Yeah, I'm not good at either of those, so someone else could lead. Yeah, not really. Uh, Ven Vavnet? I mean, I have no focuses that apply. Neither do we, but my reason science oh. total is a nine, so... I'm not much better at a ten. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll lead then, and I'll take three momentum to get two extra dice. Alrighty. Uh, or I could roll one dice, sure. <clears throat> Let's add another three. Uh, survival wouldn't be an applicable focus, would it? Uh, it's a stretch, but I'll let it. I'll let it apply. All right, that's two. That's three. Right, there's the three you need. Uh, let's see if you get any momentum uh, from a assist from Venlath. You do. You go up to four momentum total. So, uh, what you guys realize as you're scanning this thing is that there is some form of magnetic resonance. Uh, you're not sure if it's quite the surface of the world or if it's the spires themselves, but it is sort of like a, uh, what are those things called? A maglev train. Uh, where the rocks are sort of floating because of this magnetic uh, repulsion. But at the same time, there's enough attraction that they don't just, you know, fly off randomly and go flying into the air. Um, there is as much pushing and pulling here, just enough to keep them floating in midair. Yeah, so they're sort of just like slowly spinning around in a magnetic field sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that you realize, and I'm going to give this to you for free, is that you didn't really notice this coming in, but now that you're up close and using sort of hand tricorders, uh, magnetic fields this large would hamper your larger ship's ability to get accurate readings of the surface. Hmm. So in other words, we don't. if our ship didn't see anything, it's not the ship's fault. Correct. There could be things, but... Okay. Well. Eyes sharp, ladies. Let's see what else is out here. Mm -hmm. I'll just take my tricorder, put it in wide wide scan mode, and just keep, lo keep looking for things above and below surface, because if there's a land shark, I want to kill it. Alright. Well, you're going to get your wish, but we'll get to you in a moment. Uh, we're going to cut back to the engineering squad. Uh, if you guys could roll me uh, another uh, control engineering and everything that goes with it, uh, the difficulty here is just a two. Right. Patch me that sealant. And we're just going to spray this on. Control engineering for everybody. That or control science. Well, by one more die as well. All right. All right, one from Astora. All right, so you get that momentum right back. And yeah, roll me a uh, six challenge die, please, Lara, and let's see if you get enough work done. All right, I will say if you spend a momentum, you will complete the work track and thus complete the task. Sounds fair. All right. All right. So, uh, you know, you finish sealing up the microfractures on the hull. You give it a good once over. You feel pretty confident. And... That's when uh, the three of you begin to feel rumbling beneath your feet. Uh, okay, that's uh, not the ship starting up, is it? No, no, not with us in the outside. I'll pull out my tricorder and do a scan. Okay. I'm thinking it's a good idea to get back in the ship. Well... Uh, as you uh, start to uh, move for the ship, you see in the distance, we'll say kind of towards the horizon where the sun, the, the sun is on the map, uh, you see in that direction a massive worm-like creature just come out of the ground and do an arc and go back into the ground. And, and I imagine the survey team sees that as well. 
Uh, yes, the survey team does see this as well. I suddenly feel under-equipped for this hunt. I feel we should go, ladies. Let's go. And I imagine we start quick jogging back to the Radiance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yep. you, you guys make a, a dead sprint back towards it. Um, because as you turn and start running, you realize that the worm thing, well, we're just going to call it a sandworm because that's what it is. Uh, the sandworm is indeed headed in your direction, or at least the ship's direction. And in order to get there before it does, you're going to need to do some rolls for me. So scanning team, I need you to roll me each. L- luckily, Serata Draco are very good at running in a straight line. They are indeed. Uh, I need you each to roll me a fitness and security, please. The difficulty is a two. Oh, I don't even have a good value yet for this. Okay. Uh, Uh, And uh, I'm, 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 I'm willing, I'm willing to to pitch my argument that survival would be good. Survival (laughs) applies. Um, no, I, I got nothing, so I'll just take a momentum to get an extra die. Okay. So I do see only one success for Zevni. Oh, no. One for Vavnet. So, as it so happens, uh, you know, you do make it to the Radiance in time, but as soon as you start to pile in... Uh, you do see that the sandworm is seconds away. And in fact, it's just now coming out of the ground and getting ready to crash back down onto the radiance. All right. Go, um, go, 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 go! I think Vabnet's going to just turn around and fire a phaser at it to try and just throw it off. Okay. Uh, I will say, uh, even though I don't have a token on here, this thing is massive. Like, think uh, think Dune when I say sandworm. Where we mean? Oh yeah, these things are huge. You guys uh, didn't do the special walk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, but basically, the is just trying to like shoot it in the roof of its mouth and just distract it along enough for us to kick the engines off. Gotcha. Um, so, just so we're on the same page, are you using your hand phaser? Or are you using the Radiance's phaser? Because there is a difference. Oh, in scale. oh, are we already are we already in the ship? Yeah, you could already be in the ship by this point. Okay, oh, cool. I, no, I, I thought we were still getting in. I, I will shoot it with the ship. I will shoot phasers. Yeah, just, I will just, shoot torpedoes. I don't care. <laughs> All right. No, to just just maybe a, a low powered. Well, I mean, we don't even need to lock on. Just manually fire the phasers in that in its general direction. All right. Well, Zevni, uh, I believe you are our tactical guru here. Uh, if you could roll me a control security, uh, difficulty two. And uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of thread here to say that uh, you're doing this under fire. Uh, you are trying to do as fast as possible to sort of scare this thing off. So I am going to make the complication range a 16 to 20 uh, because, uh, you know, you could actually miss or... Heavens forbid, you could overload the phasers, and it would not be good. Uh, what's the difficulty, too? Difficulty is two, and the ship does assist with a weapons and security. Yep, you already got it, so no assist from the ship. Uh, then I'll, I'll spend a momentum to get a third dice. All right. Um, and I, Starship Tactical Systems, I'm sure, would make a great focus. It is indeed, yeah. Um... My talent doesn't work, so nothing. Nothing. So what's going to happen is, uh, you know that one scene in Star Wars where, you know, the the Millennium Falcon gets trapped inside a worm on an asteroid? It's kind of like that. Uh, The worm's maw comes down around you and just envelops the radiance. Oh, man. Uh... We've got one momentum left. Can I spend that momentum and a determination mm-hmm. to, to micro-warp jump before it closes its mouth in atmosphere? Uh, I didn't think about that. I could I could do uh, spend a determination. Is it actually to possible zeros. to warp jump in an atmosphere? I totally. don't think I've ever said one way or another. But We're going to find out. 
can't form a, a warp bubble. Well, let's uh, let's do order of operations here. Would would Zevni uh, use her determination to re-roll uh, those successes or those not successes? Um. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to because one of them is a complication. Oh, okay. Oh, good catch. You said sixteen to twenty, so the yep, fifteen isn't a complication, but the sixteen is. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to spend my ter- determination and, um, uh, yeah, and re-roll those two. All right. And what is the value you're calling into play here? Uh, well, the only value I have mm-hmm. is first one in, last one out. Sure. I'll let it apply. Um, so you can re-roll as many of those as you want. It doesn't have to be just the the, uh, the complication. All right. Well, uh, I'll try both of the zeros. Okay. And I get us one more. And still a complication. And still a complication. But you do get the two successes you need. So go ahead and roll me damage uh, from the Radiance. I think it's just three challenge die. Um, but let's see what you roll. Let's let's see what you get. Okay. Uh, I will say, uh, if you give me your momentum uh, for piercing, uh, you will be able to hit the worm and maybe scare it off, but there will be a complication. Uh, Thoughts for that, everybody? So long as it doesn't split into several smaller worms, I'm okay with that. We also have Uh, the versatile two from the phasers, so we can, we have those momentum. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm all for not getting eaten by the sandworm. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like another great adventure to me. Yeah. Um. Then I will spend... Then I'll I'll take your offer and spend the one momentum we have and then the two extra ones from Versatile for also piercing. All right. And even though you just did two damage, it is enough uh, that sh- the sandworm kind of recoils as the Radiance's phaser banks fire out uh, and strike it. Uh, so it does begin to turn away. However, uh, as it goes back into the ground, it's so close to the Radiance that the resulting shockwave does quite literally lift the Radiance up into the air and sends it flying. Uh, so Chize. I need you to roll me either a control or a daring con, uh, difficulty four, and the ship will be assisting with engines and con. Actually, let's let's make it a computers and con. Uh, to, to just try and catch it as it tumbles through the air. Uh, computers have the breach, so how does that affect it? Uh, I would say that uh, it doesn't... We'll say that you restored them easily, so it, there is okay. no... Oh, yeah, that, that breach would have been fixed as part of the repairs. Correct, yeah. Probably. So yeah. you don't have to worry about that breach now, uh, but I will say that if you don't catch the Radiance, if you don't, like, stop yourself midair, you're probably going to take a breach as you hit the ground again. I'm going to burn my determination. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a little fancy flying. I like it. For two automatic successes. Okay. So you just need to me one. Would helm operations, evasive maneuvers, or small craft come into play? All of them. <laughs> wow. Nice. Wow. All right. So uh, let's see. That is a total of seven successes. It was difficulty four. So you managed to get a uh, a three momentum gain off that. So yeah, Chize, you're prepared for this. There's a reason you were top of your class at the academy. This is this is old hat. Uh, you just sort of dance your fingers across the console, and very quickly the radiance stabilizes out. And would you be sort of hovering midair? Would you be moving along the surface? Would you be leaving atmosphere? I vote for leaving atmosphere. So I, can, I second this motion. Third that motion. Let's go. All right. So, uh, kind of the final uh, shot before we go to break is the Radiance banking on up into the clouds and heading back up into space. So you guys have avoided getting eaten by the sandworm. But that is where uh, repairs hold. For now. 
as long for now keyword here all right well uh this is where we are going to take our 10 minute break uh just be aware that i do mute the stream uh while uh break music is on so you guys may speak freely but yeah let's uh let's be in about 10 minutes And I have to meet myself here so I can go PRB. I don't know. I mean, can you really qualify Tribble Infestation as Prime Directive? For you mods of the uh, Twitch chat, apparently my uh, WTF is this command uh, works now. So if anyone uh, anyone is curious and wondering what we're doing, uh, just uh, exclamation mark what it, what uh, WTF is this? All one word, and it should pop up what you see in chat. Five minutes before we're back. Unless, of course, people get back sooner. <laughs> it's been a 
while since I've watched any of the Emperor's stuff. Right, that's kind of my feelings on the matter too. Like, they started off small and I like that, but now they're like 30 minute productions and I'm like, eh. It's, uh, what's, what's the other shit? It's kind of like the Team Four Star effect. Like, they, they might have let, uh, they might have let the, the fame kind of get to their heads a little bit. So. It's also my GMing style for, for Star Trek Adventures. Um, I mean, technically, there's nothing saying that you guys could ignore my seed and phrasing. Uh, ignore it and go uh, off in a totally different direction. Uh, but in general, you're, you're completely right where you can set a task for the players to do and you have a general idea about how they'll react to that choice. Like, you guys uh, actually brought up the microfracture thing earlier than I expected. So, that was good. Otherwise, we just use theater of the mind. Yeah. I think we're just waiting on Prier and Gorteg. Uh, Walter's got another uh, about a minute and a half before we go back live. Yeah, 
And on the note of uh, giant tribbles, let's go ahead and uh, start things back up. Apparently I had only half muted myself, so the stream heard some of me anyway. Oh well. We, you know, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a stream of mine if I didn't have some weird thing going on. So, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, pick up. You guys have just gone uh, back up into orbit about this planet, and uh, is Walter Beckett? He is back. Yep. Cool. He just... Um, so, uh, Mrs. Zevney, uh, as tactical officer, you are detecting or you are getting an alert on your console. Uh, I will see what the alert is. All right. Well, uh, what you're seeing is that a craft, some some form of craft, has lifted off from the surface of the planet and is now on a pursuit course. So I'm going to show this to you guys, and then I'll describe it for anyone who might not be looking at a screen. Uh, so what you're looking at is if someone made a spine out of, uh, pretty much out of a, uh, out of a, oh, Roll20 might have just got kicked off line. Hmm. Uh, so it's it's like someone took a spine, made it out of metal, and then laid it out flat uh, so that the sort of arcs of the spine are pointed down, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And the front, if you could call it the front of the spine, is where the base is on a normal spine. And it's it's vaguely tapered. So there is some intelligence design here. And it's clearly artificial. <laughs> we need I a hawk. Uh, shall I contact them? How big are they? Uh, I would say that they are a comparable sky, a sky, comparable size to the radiance. Okay. Um, um, yes. Please. Well, if no one, if no one stops her, Vavnet will sort of use standard hailing frequencies. Okay. So uh, you open a channel. Uh, you. You know, send off the typical Starfleet, you know, slew of hello, hi, how are you, etc., etc. You get no response. All right. Uh, Ensign Chisney, plot an, es plot an escape course. Uh, patch, me patch me through just in case they're listening and choosing not to respond. You are patched in, Lieutenant. Attention, unidentified vessel. My name is Lieutenant... Uh, ah, Lieutenant Vinleth of the Federation Starship Radiance. We apologize for trespassing on your surface. We were, we had suffered minor damage and set down for repairs. We are in the process of leaving your planet now. Still no response, and they are still on an intercept course. I'd like um, to scan them. QSD spooling up, ready to go. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, so if Astora does the scan, it would be a reason science assisted by the ship's sensor science. Uh, if Zevni did the scan, uh, it would be the same thing, just with security instead of science. Uh, my science is a five, reasoning is a ten. I've got sensor operation focus. What's uh, what you got? I guess that means roll for it. Um, Sorry about that. I literally had a uh, jet buzz my house, but I think uh, I think Walter either stepped away or he muted himself again. Oh no! I totally did not know you were uh, talking to me. Um, yeah. What? Uh, if you have a ten and a five or a ten and a four, you've got me beat on everything. So it's probably best if you make the roll. Alrighty. So, if uh, someone could get the uh, sensors science on the ship. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Okay. So, you get a momentum. And what you learn, Astora, is that the vessel is using a unknown power source. You're, you're not able to really get a feel for... Uh, what might be powering this device, only that it's not anything standard or known to Starfleet. Uh, the other thing that you're noting is that you are having a bit, of, bit, uh, a bit of a problem getting through the hull of the vessel. 
you're not able to get a concrete reading on if there are life signs or if this is some form of automated craft. Uh, however, I will say that this does not uh, in any way, shape, or form appear to be a caretaker or caretaker-like uh, drone ship. Yeah, just n n none of the technology markers. Correct. Yeah. Well, I, for one, am not willing to stick around for first contact. Chisney, spool up QSD and launch when ready. Let's wave at uh, them as we go by. All right. So, again, uh, QSD is going to involve a controlling con from Chise and a engines con from the ship, and one other character may assist with either control engineering or control in science. I'll take the ship. Okay. I'll assist. So All right. I was saying I was pulling it up. Nice. Very nice. It's three successes already. <laughs> It's four successes. Five successes. So you get two momentum, or three momentum. Very nice. You're a cap. So, uh, you guys jump to QSD. And everything seems to be going fine. Except... Let's put a marker in that world for potential exploration and first contact when using a more diplomatic vessel. Uh, I, Hi, hate to be, I hate to kill the mood, but... But oh wait, sorry. I thought you were quickly, about to say. Well, you notice very quickly that uh, it has also jumped to QSD and is following you. Did it jump, jump, or did it like follow us in our tunnel? Uh, it followed you into your tunnel. May I suggest we drop away. out and restart our uh, QSD in a separate tunnel? Um. Yeah. Dropping out of QSD might give us all the time it needs to catch up to us. It's going to catch up to us anyways. Eventually, we'll have to jump at leave, and they'll be stranded wherever we are. We have no idea if they can get out, get back to where they've come from. True. Uh, just out of curiosity, in case I missed something when we talked about QSD, mm -hmm. if we drop out of it, do they stay in it? You don't know. But the tunnel would probably collapse. I it believe the tunnel collapses as well. Uh, th this is an extremely new technology, which we honestly know little, very little about. Yeah. And so we've decided to cram it into a small ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we're the Federation. That's kind of our deal. Yeah. We are also in a tunnel, so if we try to drop out of QSD, we might slow down by a fraction, and they might just ram it into us at superluminal velocity. Right. Well, to uh, add to the tension, I am going to put us in initiative order, and it's you guys up first. So I'll throw all your dots on there. There you go. Uh, I guess I'd be internal systems. Yep, you would be... Uh, well, no, internal systems uh, would be uh, Jester's character. Uh, I'd be sensor would be, operation. You would be sensor operations, correct. And I will say that uh, I don't really have one, unfortunately, for uh, Vavnet. But if anyone does get injured, we will put you into the turn order. Or if you want to do something that is not, say, standard, we can also put you into the turn order. I, I mean, really, she's just sitting there with the medical tricorder in case she's needed. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, it's whoever would like to go on your side. Just raising shields. Yeah. <laughs> red alert. Some... Yeah, red alert. Okay, so we'll say that raising shields is a minor action. You still have your normal action. Um, under normal circumstance, I would have just used rally for momentum, but um, I believe that I can order someone to do an action in my turn, correct? Uh, you can use the direct action, yeah. yes. Okay. Well, I if these guys want to fight, I would rather not do it in a quantum tunnel. So I'm going to direct Chisney to drop us out of okay. the tunnel. Hi, sir. So uh, that's going to be another control and con. And, uh, of course, you know, same, same rules we did to get into QSD. Uh, however, I am going to spend some threat here to make it a complication range of 17 to 20. And 
Uh, I'm also going to make the difficulty a three. No, oh, we have momentum. Yeah, I'm going to spend a momentum for a third die. All right. All okay. Right. Just uh, shaft the entire party. Would have opening the quantum tunnel have spent any power? Uh, I would say that initially opening it did cause some power, but since this is technically a new scene, quote unquote, you start with full power. But it is a good point that you bring up. Um, you will need, if you wish to stay in QSD, or that starts to become a thing, uh, you must maintain four power or above to stay in QSD. Otherwise, you get sort of shot out violently, and it's it's not good. Uh, well, but let's see, that's three successes already, which is all you need. Uh, I do need to see the ship's engines con, and if anyone is assisting... Engines con... I can do that. Yep. Cool. All right. There's that momentum right back. Mm-hmm. All right. So if uh, if uh, somebody uh, assisted, it would be control and con. Uh, control engineering or control science. Hmm. So, uh, just as a, an idea. I can assist, and then I have decisive leadership to where we can hold the initiative and it doesn't cost us anything. To where we could pull... Um, look, let's go all the way back to Top Gun, and we can pull the Maverick Maneuver, hit the brakes, they fly right by us, and then we can shoot them. Well, you are... So, the the, the main action has already been taken. The command action has already been taken by Vinlev. So... Oh, okay. Never mind, then. Okay. And, and they haven't shot at us yet, you know? Mm -hmm. So, shooting them preemptively really kind of doesn't make sense. Yes. I, I... I suggest we get out of the tunnel. We, we disengage from QSD. The, far, the more, longer we spend in this, the farther we're going to go. And dragging them along with us, they may not even know what they've done, but they've just followed us. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's why I'm out of... That's why I dropped out of QSD, because I'm hoping that they'll just realize what OMG WTF, turn around and go home. But if they want a straight up fight, then at least we're in normal space where the rules of normal fighting applies and we don't have to worry about, you know, damaging the tunnel or something. So, uh, Chize, you do everything right. You make it so that the <laughs> ship is supposed to drop out of QSD and... I mean, you even hear the, the maybe sort of whine of the unit in the back of the ship sort of power down, but you're still in the corridor. And I would think, Astora, by this point you realize that you are not riding your wave at this point. It is the unknown ship that is generating the corridor at this point. This is odd, Captain. We should have collapsed the tunnel by now. This is... If I'm reading the variants correctly, this tunnel is not being generated by airship. Are we seriously the last uh, galactic power to invent slipstream drives? Well, technically we beat the warp to it. Yeah, they had transwarp. That doesn't count. <sighs> Fine. Open hailing frequencies. All right. I will right, say I'm, that unless that you a... maintain the initiative, it will be their turn. Uh, let's Fine. see what they do. Yes. All right. Beam over <laughs> bonbon flower. So, uh, on their turn, they uh, actually are going to open fire. A uh, from that sort of tapered head of the spine, uh, out comes a uh, a turret of some sort, and much like a battleship gun uh, from uh, Starship Yamato or Battleship Yamato, uh, it fires a blast of energy towards you guys. And with two successes, it will indeed succeed. Uh, so, well, hold up. Let me double check here. Any of those crits? No. So, good news. Uh, because they are at longer range and because they um, are using disruptor cannons, uh, the difficulty here was a four because you're also a small craft. Um, so, they miss you. They miss you completely. Uh, but that is their turn. 
So sort of uh, green bolts, uh, much like a pulsed phaser on the Defiant, just soar above and around the Radiance, but do not hit you. Drakes of old, we were leaving! We didn't build the ship for combat. It's not designed to fight in Quantum Slipstream Drive. Is anything designed to fight in Quantum Slipstream Drive? In retrospect, this was an oversight! I'm not even sure our shields will really work. Captain. <clears throat> well, we might not have to fight them directly. If we can disrupt the, th the slipstream drive enough, like, we might not be able to collapse it, but we may be able to throw ourselves out of it. Along those same lines, an idea I've had. Yes. If we yes. could scan ahead and detect a subspace eddy affecting the, the tunnel ahead of time, we could lead them into it and then pop out from behind it bef before it hits us and knock them out of the tunnel. Sounds good. Let's do it. I'd like to use the sensor sweep uh, to detect this sensor sweep uh, to detect if there's a, an eddy ahead of us. Well, sure. we have the momentum. We can create the advantage. You can also just also spend two momentum to make the advantage. Oh, that sounds good to me. We won't use up a slot then. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, to pull off the plan you have involved, it would just be a... Uh, I'd say this is probably a, a daring plus con on the part of Chizé. And uh, let's say that the difficulty here... I'm going to spend some of my remaining threat. I've got all of two left. Uh, I'm going to say that this is a difficulty three. Burning another momentum for a third die. Okay. Nice. Get the three you need. So yeah, uh, the Radiance is able to sort of lead this unknown ship uh, towards an eddy. And at the last possible second, Chizé, you bank the Radiance up and over the eddy. And uh, I do need to roll for to see if the scout notices... Uh, it does indeed, actually. So it, too, gets very close to the eddy, but at the last possible second, it corrects itself and continues to follow you. They're still on our tail. Blast. Uh, do, do we want to try a modified torpedo spread? We don't have torpedoes on this thing. Nope, all you have modified, are phaser banks. Modified phaser bank spread? Can we vent warp plasma? That would be... We can, yes. Since we're not currently establishing the, the QSD tunnel, we theoretically could. Uh, I, I would like to, to uh, reroute some power to reinforce our air warp field, though, just in case. I mean, it'll definitely cause some chaos. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't know that I would want warp plasma in my face. Yeah. So I will say, in order to do that, you will have to spend the two momentum to retain the initiative. Shall we do that? Uh, our alternative is to just let them keep shooting at us. All right. All Let's right. Do it. Go. Right. Best way to deal with a uh, chasing predator is to blind it. So I will say uh, that venting uh, warp plasma in the way you guys have described, uh, this will be a daring engineering. Uh, difficulty here because you are at QSD. I'm going to make this a base difficulty of a three. And I think it's probably fair for me for me to make the complication range a, a 17 to 20, because if you don't do it right, you <laughs> could potentially cause problems for yourself. Yeah, the, the, this is the kind of thing that they strongly that a Vulcan would strongly recommend again mm -hmm. that's why they're not on the team dear I mean fair All right. so uh, Jester I believe Alara would be doing that role unless anyone else would care to do it I'm sorry uh, I blanked out for a second there no you're fine so yeah, uh, if you are uh, doing the uh, warp plasma ejection to yep. try and throw them off, uh, it will be a daring engineering, difficulty 3, complication range 17 to 20. Uh, 
power systems to focus? No. I know. Yeah, unfortunately not. Well, take with the dice count. Alright, so uh, I will say it was a difficulty 3 task. Uh, um, ship can assist, wasn't it? Ship yeah, so the ship is going to assist with a structure engineering. I can do that. Burn the momentum. Well, the ship can't buy can. additional die. Oh, damn, I forgot about that. Oh. Okay. So, the good news... Oh, no, that's a complication. So, bad news. Uh, bad news. Uh, when you go to try this, Alara, um, you maybe vent a little too much, or some of it gets caught up in your shields, and the end result is is that you do sort of begin to... The entire ship begins to shake, and you guys are going to lose a total of two power from this event. So you're now at six out of eight, and remember that uh, if you drop below four, you get thrown violently out of this thing. Mm. But we're not maintaining the tunnel, so... If we're just riding in the tunnel, mm -hmm. does that still apply? Yes, because uh, that's the same thing that happened with the Voyager episode with the Delta right. Flyer. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter if you're the one generating <laughs> the tunnel or not. If you don't exit properly, it's bad. Um, but I'm also now going to spend my remaining two threat to create the complication that this whole maneuver has allowed the unknown ship to get within close range. So they are right on your bumper. And they're going to open fire. And they will indeed score uh, enough hits, I believe. Let's double check. Yes, they will. And the good news is they would only do the one damage, which doesn't get past your resistance. So, yeah, the disruptor cannons do hit you this time, but doesn't even get past your shields. Okay, um, I have one more idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes? Uh, have you ever heard of a maneuver called a barrel roll? <laughs> Once or twice, although I'm not entirely sure why one would choose to ride a barrel down a waterfall at a time like this. Wrong barrel. Well, that's Walker. kind of where I'm going. Um, what I'm thinking is, um, we do a low power phaser spread behind us just to blind its senses temporarily, and then we essentially do a loop the loop and flip over the top of it and end up behind it, and then just sort of ride the and then just make use of the turbulence behind it to just ride out of the tunnel that sounds daring uh chise can you do that at this point i'm willing to try anything all right then if we can do it let's do it all right so the first task, that, we're going, yeah. if you can't do that we're going to shoot it yeah so the first task, as I heard it, is going to be a phaser spread to blinded sensors. Yes? No? Yes. Yep. Okay, so, uh, Zevni, I need you to roll me a control security, please. Uh, because you are a small craft, uh, this is going to be a difficulty three. And the ship is going to assist you with a weapons and security. All right. Um... I'm not going to use the momentum. I'd rather save that for actually pulling off the flying maneuver. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do have a focus. So uh, we will fail. Well, the, ship, the ship gets a crit. That was weapons plus security. Gotcha. And no one ever found out what happened to the Radian. Aided into history. Yeah. So. Maybe. The, uh, the Radiance, uh, under Zevni's control, you try to fire out a uh, phaser burst, but either because they're too small of a ship or, you know, you're literally flying QSD at the moment, you, you just don't get a hit on them. They're, it just does not work. Um, oop, nope, did not want a minus five. Uh, you guys should be at five. Oh, now we just have to hope we're more maneuverable than they are. Mm -hmm. 
So there is uh, one final action you guys could take, because it has already moved its two. Um, so you technically have sensor operation left, but you could do any other task just at an increased difficulty. What if we launch a probe to smack into them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would certainly be surprising. Well, I mean, technically, I could override uh, to give a task to someone else. Or no, stand I, for I, week. I, I actually want to see how the probe idea works. There are warp capable probes. So there are. Hiring a, a warp probe with antimatter. Yeah. I mean, probably don't even need to make it explosive, just have it whack into its face. <laughs> All right, take the take one of the few probes we got and s ram it down its spiny throat. All right, preparing J turn maneuver. So uh, let's uh, you know what? Let's have Vavnit take the lead here because uh, I feel like she hasn't gone yet, and we'll make mm -hmm. uh, we'll make them make them uh, in charge of the rolling. So you're going to be rolling a uh, a daring plus science or a daring plus security, whichever you'd prefer. Uh, let's go security. And I'm going to say this is a difficulty three, and the ship will not assist you, but someone else can. I can assist. All right, and I will use that one momentum and two threat to get two dice. Okay. Three successes. Three successes all right. is all you need. So, uh, we'll say for sake of argument, uh, you fire out a probe out of the rear of your vessel, and, you know, you're, you're pretty damn close to one another, so it smacks into this unknown vessel's, for lack of a better term, uh, face. And in the process, the probe starts to disintegrate and flatten, and the matter, antimatter aboard it, uh, comes into contact and explodes violently. So if you could roll me a four challenge die, please. Alrighty. Okay, would you care to re-roll any of that? Um, I'd doing I don't think I've got anything I can re-roll it with, though. Uh, we can spend the momentum. Yep, we can. With challenge oh, dice, we, we can, can spend, spend the momentum. momentum. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll spend the momentum to re-roll three of those dice. All right. Yeah, one more. <clears throat> okay. Now, you can't re-roll, but you could give me threat to add to damage. Um, I, I, let's do that. Let's sort of get it up to a breach. Okay, so how much threat are you going to spend? All of it. Uh, yeah, like, is it like one, then two, then three for each extra one? Or? Uh, no, as far as I'm able to read, it is one threat or one momentum for one damage. All right, then let's add three threat to bring that up to five damage. Okay, and, uh... For sake of argument, if you could do your system hit for me. Cool. Uh, it's just a... Is that a d20? Uh, should be a macro. I got it. All right. Oh, very nice. So, uh, you know, probe explodes across the, the blunt face of this thing, and in the process, the there's just sort of this massive hole that is torn <coughs> into the front of it. And uh, if you look very carefully, you can see the spectral forms of some form of ghastly specter sort of leaving the vessel like it's being torn out of the vessel and thrown out into the corridor and immediately the ship begins to drift back and back and then it begins to list and the they prepare the tunnel mm -hmm. so as this thing basically falls out of the tunnel uh, Chize, I need you to roll me a uh, daring here a daring con, a difficulty of two, and actually no, you did just give me some threat. Uh, difficulty four, 
And the ship will assist with a engines and con. I'm going to give you three threat for two extra dice. Alrighty. Even when I'm not playing Mirthrin, the Mirthrin maneuver lives on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so Ooh, the good it's like news Christmas. is you do succeed. Well, you will, because I believe the ship will get you an assist. I believe in the ship. So let's let's see if the ship gets you the assist. Engine science. Engine con. Engine con. Whoops. One of these days I'll actually get everything right. I've only been playing this game now for two years. <laughs> see? Oh, yeah, ship. Alright, so the good news is thanks to Chize's masterful flying, uh, you do maintain the corridor and are not thrown violently out of it. Uh, however, the sheer stress of the hull uh, is there is going to be some damage because of the stresses involved. Now, it's not going to be a whole lot, but I will roll the challenge die all the same. Uh, so let's see. Uh, you have a resistance of two, so that's a grand total of three damage to your shields. You're fine. Alrighty. And yeah, the, uh, the unknown ship is thrown out of the corridor and, for all intents and purposes, is gone. Well, well, that was an exhilarating first day, wouldn't you say? I recommend we travel for a little bit and then drop out again and then get our bearings. Otherwise, we might be, well, traveling for a very long time in the wrong direction. Agreed. But we want to get some distance between us and them. Agreed. And I will go and see if I can't fix this replication to get something other than to Gino. While you're up, could you pass me Rakagino? Same. <laughs> Computer, round of Rakagino's for the crew. Instead of a Rakagino, a big old turkey materializes. Live or dead? Dead. Probably. I'm hoping dead. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not well, a real turkey. It's, it's a dead turkey. Well, I mean, it's always going to be a dead turkey. The question is, cooked or uncooked? Oh, it's cooked. Uh, any port in a storm, and I grab a drumstick and chew into it messily. <laughs> well, in that case, can you ask for a turkey and then pass me the Ractagino that comes out? <laughs> Computer, <laughs> roast turkey. Ractagino comes out. There you go. Uh, Alrighty. So, uh, I am going to speed things up just a little bit so we can get everything in. Uh, so we are going to cut back to the Amalthea at this point. And uh, we'll say uh, yep. that uh, Mirthrin... Per personal head cannon replicators always default to Ractagenos because they're one of the easiest things to replicate safely without accidentally making them poisonous. Probably right. <clears throat> um, so Mirthrin, kind of a good news, bad news situation. Good news... Apparently the Marissa love to eat Tribbles. Bad news. This point, you're getting reports that Tribbles have started showing up on other ships. <sighs> oh. Oh, this is oh, this is going to delay construction on the on the space station by a good week or so. I am I I'm experiencing problems with the security officers having trouble eliminating the Tribbles. Which is also just stuns one across the bridge. <laughs> I might have to do some hollow deck drills about focusing on killing what does the word cute animals. You know, I yeah. think we're going to have to go a, uh, go a little more drastic with this. I think we're going to have to start doing a stage deck by deck decompression of the ship to just starve them out captain um i've been reviewing the logs of the initial encounter with the tribbles with uh, kirk's enterprise and in that in in that he poisoned their their there's two possible ways the first is the tribbles ate poisoned food and died on mass or the second is there was a mass transport activity of the klingons or of the Tribble, onto a nearby Klingon vessel. While our allied nature with the Tribbles probably prohibits the precise duplication of such efforts, 
beaming the tribbles onto, say, out into space or into the gas giant might be appreciated or might be applicable. Well, uh, the Marissa do seem to like them. Let's see if we can't arrange to transport them to a holding facility in a, in Atlanta. Atlantis. Atlantis, sorry. <laughs> you did the same thing I did. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I will say uh, that to beam that many Tribble uh, down to the surface, uh, I will say that that's going to be a difficulty, because let's see, they're not on a transporter pad. The destination is not a transporter pad. So I believe that's a difficulty four uh, task. And that's going to be a control engineering Assisted by the ships. Oh, you don't have sensors. Hmm. No, we don't. So oh, this is gonna be great. Okay, so we actually can't beam the tribbles off. We have we do have to deal with them. Yeah, you're gonna have to figure out. So now, I will say you could use other ships, but the difficulty will go up even higher. Well, we don't really care if the tribbles arrive intact. They they can arrive like dead or. They have transport a psychosis because they're tribbles. Mm -hmm. uh, a psychotic tribble. Probably not real, not really different from our actual tribble to the Mursa, as long as they taste the same. Commander mm -hmm. Gortag, welcome back to the bridge. Thank you. I noticed that you used the site to site transporters. Are you? Were the, were the hallways inaccessible? Just trying to avoid the enemy is all. Yeah, speaking of, we're about to try and coordinate a mass beam out using all the other ship's transporters. And are you beaming them into the sun? <laughs> uh, well, currently we'll make do with space and then... I don't know, clean them up with tractor beams. Interesting. Mentor Gortek, could I ask some advice? I need to run practice drills with other cute animals, but I have no appreciation for what is cute. What other animals would you identify as cute that my security officers could be trained to kill? Uh, uh, I I don't really have any ideas. Uh, some people think targs are cute. You could have them hunt targs, though they are much more dangerous. In a or all, any suggestions for cute animals? What do uh, we What do we get to hunt the targs after they've eaten and all the tribbles? Ah, uh, the Australia problem. Ah. Uh. Cane toads. Cane toads everywhere. I'm afraid that I do not find the notion... I do not find small furry creatures to be cute. However, going by a general... If you just... If I were to just come up with a checklist for cute, anything small furry and makes cute noises would be... A, and makes a small, high-pitched, affectionate noises might be applicable for cute. Possibly small kittens, maybe puppies. Whoa! Like baby vacations. Whoa! whoa. Uh, no. Okay, I am just no. going to. No. I am just going to use pull rank here and veto the <laughs> holodeck simulations of uh, kitten and puppy <laughs> shooting. <laughs> this and, is the thing. And Gore, take a look over to Hamasi, who's probably just paled, eyes wide, just in shock. Yeah, she's like halfway through petting a tribble and she's just like uh I, I was asked a question and gave a perfectly logical answer it is not my fault that many or emotionally driven species find such things or a derive or strong that uh, develop strong emotional attachments to such creatures I, I'm confused are are the kittens on earth not infantications I believe that they are a distant I believe that they might have been a failed attempt by the preservers. Moving on. <laughs> I think using uh, the other ship's transporters here is the best bet. 
Agreed. Alright. So, uh, this is still gonna be a control engineering. Uh, we'll say that I believe the Ophion has the best sensors, so let's go with that. Uh, the Ophion will be assisting with sensors engineering. And I'm going to say that the difficulty would go up because of, you know, other ships, but the Ophion should still have advanced sensors. So the overall difficulty will still be a four. Could air chroniton sensors come into play here? I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure the Tribbles aren't moving fast enough for the chroniton sensors to even pick them up. I'm just looking for whatever I can to help this. <laughs> All right, so unfortunately, the Ophion does not get you an assist, which means I need to see at least four successes from whoever rolls the control engineering. Uh, do, do we just want to max out on threat and roll with five dice? Uh, Can we spend our determination to space the triples? If you Who's... want to spend your determination to space triples, I am all for it. Who's rolling the uh, control engineering? I mean, there's a transporter chief on Ophion, or there yeah. was before. There was a uh, uh, Zendi yeah. insectoid. Yeah. They're probably yeah. dead by now. They don't live long. Could be. <laughs> this is his son, Chistalik, son of Chistalik. Uh, well, yeah. What happened to him? He's yeah, still he's here. There. He's there. But well, you mean you mean you guys didn't rob him from the Ophion like you did every other crew member? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So, all right. So, yeah, let's spend five threat on this, or enough threat for five dice. Okay, so six threat. Okay. And so that was insight plus engineering? Uh, control and engineering. Control. Ah. Control plus engineering. Watch him dump all of that into the next roll. Entirely Probably. possible. Hey. Four successes. That's all you need. Yeah. So uh, on the on the uh, other side, um, I do have technical expertise. I may well re-roll one of those d20s, okay. which may just to pull momentum in case he pulls uh, something nasty. Still, control plus. Oh. Well. So here's what happens. Uh, you do manage to beam every single Tribble on every single ship out into space. However, instead of having a nice cloud of Tribble that would just sort of orbit the planet, you more or less do it so their orbit starts to decay. And soon there's these tiny little fireballs as Tribbles burn up in the atmosphere. <laughs> Um, mm -mm. That would be like this chicken. Uh, no <laughs> Gorteg will admire from the uh, viewport on the Amalthea. Mm. Suddenly, Revol <laughs> remind me to send over a few bottles of blood wine to the transporter chief on the Ophia. That was beautiful. Uh, I do. <laughs> I, I do hope they aren't too intelligent. Poor Kalos Cool. <laughs> 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 I don't think we're going to be able to top that. I... We do have one more scene, unfortunately. There is, unfortunately, one more scene we have to do. All right, so we'll say for sake of argument, we cut back to the Gamma Flyer or the, uh, the USS Radiance about five or six days later. And at this point, uh, you have just dropped out of QSD into the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. And if you remember, uh, the Sabine Expanse is where the Ophion was operating in uh, when it first started out. All right, uh, sensor readings and... Okay, we landed a little bit short. We're currently on the edge of the Sabine Expanse. Well, that's pretty much home for me. I spent much. I spent my early career on on Starbase Daedalus. Could try right. another jump, but we might end up in Romulan space. See Seems if we can re pick up one of the Federation's uh, star bases. Running a scan. All right. So you know, you you send out the appropriate sort of feeler signal, and 
actually you're detecting that there is a Nova class, a Nova class you were familiar with, the USS Aegeus. Uh, it is relatively nearby, and it is close enough for real-time communication. Perfect. And Vavnet will establish a sender hail. Okay. Uh, so I guess I need to know what are you saying in your initial message? Or is Vinleth actually saying something and then transmitting? I think Vinleth would say something. Okay. What are you saying? Ah. My name is Lieutenant Junior Grade Vinleth of the USS Radiance, representing the fleet under command of Admiral Barton Skull, uh, currently lost in the Gamma Quadrant. We are to report uh, fleet status on our way to Earth. Please respond. And after a moment, the uh, view screen activates, and you see a uh, very imposing-looking gentleman. Uh, he's built like a linebacker. Uh, he stands probably about six foot five, and uh, he is wearing a, uh, strangely enough, a yellow uh, coloration. Uh, he has the rank of commander, and he says, This is Commander McAllister of the USS Aegeus. Uh, Radiance, we are not familiar with your ship or your uh, design, However, you say you speak for the Gamma Vanguard? That is correct. I am transmitting details of our ship's design and recent mission logs to you for verification. And you see him look off screen and someone <laughs> tells him something and he nods and says, Very well. Uh, I will take your word for it. Uh, I must say it is a relief to hear from you all. Uh, Starfleet had more or less declared the Gamma Vanguard lost when all that came out of the wormhole was a cloud of debris. The fact that you're here tells us that you managed to survive whatever happened in there. What is the status of the wormhole? Well, uh, you said her name was uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Vinleth, correct? Uh, sorry, you glitched out right when you said a name. Oh, she, he basically asks if Vinleth is your name again. Yes, I am Lieutenant Junior Grade Vinleth, serial number whatever well mrs vinleth uh i have further bad news whatever happened in that wormhole uh only smaller vessels out of character scale three uh only small vessels are able to safely make the transit between the alpha and gamma quadrants through the wormhole now our top scientists say that it should repair itself eventually but i sincerely hope that you that either you or someone at Starfleet HQ is yeah this this is not good understood we will be making some uh minor up updates and then we are going to uh quantum slipstream back to federation uh federation command on earth for a full for a full tact for a full briefing very good uh, if you need any supplies or assistance before you go, please let me know. Understood. GSL. Oh, just oh. Make sure you warn them about the uh, followers we had. Oh yeah, that will be full. They will be fully briefed. I'm not entirely sure one can be tracked if they enter slipstream drive alone. At least not with our known sensors. Not as far as we know. Yes. <clears throat> Oh. Yeah. Um, other than that, just look around. Just see. Anybody need some R&R &R on a Federation ship, or shall we make the last jump home? Let's make this last jump. Right out. You know what to do, Chizé. All right. And the final shot is uh, the Radiance jumping to QSD once more and heading back to Earth. And that is where we're going to end today's yeah. session. I don't so, suppose I oh, could... Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can I have a couple fleets? Can we have some fleet scenes with some characters? Oh, yeah, sure, of course. Uh, sorry, I yeah. probably... I got a little carried away there. Uh, sure, where do you uh, want to have them? And uh, uh, with whom? Personally, I wouldn't mind having one with... Uh, on the Lysithia with the captain. Uh, so, uh, Sue Tai and the captain. Okay, yeah, sure, you guys can get started as I get that set up. Um, I'm just going to chime the captain's ready room. Uh, come in. <clears throat> Captain, I request a favor, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm not transferring you back aboard the Ophion. No, sir. I'm happy here. 
Um, actually, sir, it's I'd like your assistance in one of my security training simulations. You see, there. I'm just going to slide a pad over. See, there's always at least one or two hot shots on the security who seem to believe that stunning a hostage and then taking out the hostage taker is a perfectly valid security strategy. Which, quite frankly, in certain situations it is, but it, in most situations it is not, and goes against all regulations. I'm hoping that if I can ask you to play the hostage in one of these situations, they might seem a little less hesitant, or a little more hesitant, to uh, take the easy shot, sir. Interesting. Uh, you sure this isn't uh, some, and Beckett will smile, some deep-seated uh, want to shoot your captain? Sir, no, sir, I would never... I would never entertain such mutinous thoughts. Uh, we've all thought about it. Don't worry. Uh, the ideas I had to... Uh, uh, anyways. Um, uh, of course. Uh, though I would tell you that if I actually was the hostage, I would tell you to shoot me to get a clearer shot at the hostage taker. But um, I see your point of using the captain as the hostage. Excellent, sir. The next uh, hostage drill will be will take place at 0800 hours in two days. I'm the Tribble situation was jarring for several individuals. I'm I'm sure it was quite traumatic for our uh, Klingon population. Mm. Thank you for your assistance, sir. I will not tell the security personnel that you are the hostage just to see how they react. Oh, of course. Mm. I I think this would be a good idea. Oh, splendid. Good good day, sir. Commander. And I'll head out onto the bridge. And I have a more important one on the Lysith on the uh, Ophion if that's all right. Sure, where do you want to go on the Ophion? Uh, science lab with myself and with myself, uh, Otis, I think was the ops and the yeah, engineer. Mito. Okay. And my character, of course. So Mito. Uh, Ooh, nice new science lab. There's that. Who am I missing? Uh, engineer. Cranston. Cranston. Yes. There you go. <laughs> um, so. You guys are have been. I've asked you to come. I think it's been very difficult for everyone to get, schedule some time together. Um, I'm going to be bringing in a large scan-proof crate that on one side says biogel replacement fluid. Um, and I'm going to, gentlemen. I'm not going to lie. I'm not very good at any of this, but it, I've done a lot of reading, and I think it's possible to improve. Um, cybernetic efficiency by with was doing some studying of some of this board technology and we did get the captain's permission to do this so and i'm going to pop the lid and computer initiate sandbox protocols wow, don't worry nice. i've Go ahead. don't worry guys i've already made sure all of the nanoprobes are inert and inside the scam proof box is a Borg drone that is dead. Okay. Well, I wasn't quite expecting a drone. Lieutenant, are you sure the captain knows you've got this on the ship? I'm not entirely sh That captain doesn't... The captain authorized me to run experiments with Borg technology. Um, I may have not told him precisely that I have a dead Borg drone on board? No. No, it definitely didn't tell me that. No. No. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, so, you're right. The captain did give you permission to work on Borg technology if we found it. But I don't think that he would have given you permission knowing that you had smuggled it in here in the smuggler's crate. Uh, well... Sometimes it's better to ask forgiving than permission, but I'm not. Guessing that's uh, not with a Vulcan. 
no, of course not. They're the worst people to do that with. Plus, it's a Borg. I mean, you you went through the same invasion I did. You know how much how bad these things are. Even one. I'm spending worry, two threat. Uh, the arm begins moving. I um, slap the lid back down on top of it, and I start protocol to uh, to lock that shit. Okay. <laughs> and I was going to start hitting it with a wrench, but that way works too. Of course, you you seal the crate, but after a moment, you hear a dull thud, thud, thud against the interior. Um, uh, Cranston will hit his communicator. Uh, who, who Chief calling? Tistelik on my on my communicator. Mm-hmm. Space, whatever it is attached to, right now. Okay. Hello, Waspinator. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, Waspinator will do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is scarily accurate. It's really it good. I've spent and far too much time practicing it. Anyways. I was gonna I was gonna say if there's anybody in this game that, that would be able to do it correctly, it would be McCall. Mm. Yes. Um but I yeah, I basically call for Chistolik to space the box that my communicator is attached to. Alright. So unfortunately, because I spent the threat, the box does dematerialize and it's now floating in space somewhere. Well, back to the drawing board. Uh, I... Sure. You can call it the drawing board. Uh, I know exactly where I'm going. And I'm sorry, Lieutenant, I told you I would help you with any cybernetics ideas that you had, but this is a little too far. I understand. It was a risk, and I have to suffer whatever consequences come my way. And I'm and I'm sorry that you're going to have to go through that, but I, I do not like the Borg, nor do I like having anything that even remotely resembles the Borg on, my shi- on a ship that I'm on. I've went through that once before, and that was not something I'm going to do again. <sighs> yes, ch- yes, Chief. And Cranston will walk out of the uh, science lab and make a beeline to the bridge. All right. So they are going to do something about that box of Borg tech floating in space, right? Yeah, I'm. I I have ideas. I, I have plans. I, I... I was going to say, if someone doesn't shoot it out of the sky, I can probably guess that some of you have plans for it. Uh, yeah, I'm either going to transport it or use the tractor beam and launch it into the nearest sun. <laughs> All good ideas. Yes. Right. I'm just going just to... Just a reminder, he's still got a bunch of threat left. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just going to turn around and look at Milo and go, I've overstepped my bounds, haven't I? Just a little bit um well if parts you of borg would have been okay uh full borg eh, a little overdue overboard i was i was sure that the nanoprobes were all extinct and by the the organic tissues were des- desiccated oh, that's fascinating in of itself but more controlled experiments might be a better idea you'd probably want to leave now before the captain comes down Probably a good idea. I don't want to be at the receiving end of an angry Vulcan. I'm not entirely sure it's possible for him to get angry, but then again, yeah. I'm Lieutenant just... Have Ren, report to my ready room immediately. I am not surprised. On my way, Captain. All right. Good luck. Don't I'm really more surprised that Cranston made it up there that quick. Well, you know, well, you know turbo lifts. Yeah, turbo lifts, speed of plot, you know. Oh, that, that's true. I didn't have anybody to talk to, so I got there immediately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> got it. <laughs> um, so, as much as I would love to do Vulcan yelling, uh, do we have any other scenes? <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think we're good. Okay. So now, now is where we bring the session to a close. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, players, hopefully you had a great time, and if not, you know how to get a hold of me, but uh, this is where I'm ending the stream. Uh, thank anyone uh, who is watching live or on Twitch, YouTube, uh, really anywhere at this point. Uh, thank you so much for watching slash listening in, and we will see these guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.